What is good? What is good? What is good? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and I would like to welcome you back once again to the NFL Preview. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. It's the AFC East Edition. That's right. Look at that. Put some steak on it. That's what I'm talking about. I put that Vince McMahon steak on it. <laughs> Woo, I like that. Okay. All right. Now, now I'm hyped. <laughs> now I'm hyped. That was my man, Big Sid. I'm your boy, Hollywood J. Black. Live in the building once again. Me and Big Sid, as you just said it, the NFL. And you know how we do it about this time. He said AFC East. The AFC beast or the AFC least, depending on who you believe in. But the one thing that still remains, and I probably think that we're going to agree, is that if one man starts, if one man starts, that this the the, the kings of the division will stay the kings of the division. But we got to see if that happens. But before we get into the kings of the division, we have to start it right at the bottom, where everything went to crap. Started from the bottom, now we here. That's yeah. right. Started from the bottom, now we here. Yeah. <laughs> and what I'm talking about is the 2019 Miami Dolphins, who had a horrible year except for one game where they beat yeah, the New England at the end of the season. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which set off a bunch of other things that happened. Uh, I think that was the catalyst of that New England loss that was in Tennessee. Um, that was something else, but changes are coming, right? Changes are big. Changes are here. And we are going to talk about those changes. What is your thoughts about the Miami Dolphins this year before we get into the draft picks and the schedule and all that? So I am a biased party when it comes to this division, but I do give teams credit when credit do. And I credit Brian Flores because half his team quit in the first half of that season. Um, they gave up on everything when they were 0-6. They did not want to fucking perform. They did not want to play for this man. And then Brian Flores and Ryan Fitzpatrick got together, and they kind of turned it around. They turned it into a five-win season from going 0-6. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which if you think they went 6-5 and five at the end of the season – no, five, wait, wait, wait. five and six. They went five and six. Well, no, five and five. They went zero oh and six. They had a five hundred. They had a five hundred last ten games. So, which is hilarious because we've always called the Miami Dolphins the kings of five hundred, right? They 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 they're the kings of five hundred football. Uh, and for them to finish the season at five hundred after starting the uh, the season zero oh and six is the epitome of Miami Dolphins football. They're not wrong. Uh, I mean, but you you have to you have to look at a lot of things. They traded Kenyon Drake, who was their number one running back. Kenyon Drake had a monster season uh, in in, uh, in Arizona after he got traded. Matter of fact, he was a catalyst of that running game that they desperately needed down in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So I still don't even know who's on that team. Is it Jabari Parker? I know Jabari Parker. On the Dolphins yeah. team. Yeah. Let's see. So, at, at quarterback, we got Fitz, Josh Rosen, and Tua Tugalova. At running back, at running back, we got Matt Breda, 
Jordan Howard, Miles Gaskin, and some other motherfuckers. At wide receiver, we got um, Devontae Parker. I said Jabari Parker. And, <laughs> huh? I said Jabari Parker. Fuck yeah, you did. It's Devontae <laughs> Parker. My bad. And some other motherfuckers I never. And some other motherfuckers I never heard of. And the reason I never heard of some of these motherfuckers is this: because on the NFL COVID list. Albert Wilson and Alan Hearns are st- sitting out this season. So we know uh, we know Alan Hearns is, and, we, and Albert Wilson was their other receiver. Yep, um, they're both out this season. But in spite of that, they the Dolphins actually. It wasn't that the Dolphins were bad defensively; it's thus that they were on the field way too much. They mm-hmm. couldn't get shit done. Um, and but F- Ryan Fitzpatrick actually came on really well. During the uh, at the other half of the season, it just was what it was. They See, started. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick proved what everybody already knew that he is all heart. Yeah, yeah. It it would be amazing to think what would happen if Ryan Fitzpatrick was on a really good team. You know what I'm saying? Like the team was just really already built, and they just needed a quarterback to be a quarterback. I, and that's why I've always felt bad about Ryan Fitzpatrick because I think he's one of the most cerebral quarterbacks in the NFL. He's not athletic. He's not Michael Vick. He doesn't kill you with his arm like Patrick Mahomes. He's not uh, He's not as gunslinging like Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. But he's a little bit of everything if he needs to be. Remember, Ryan Fitzpatrick became famous because of that one long ass run in Buffalo that he did, where he dropped back and nobody and all the receivers were covered on the left hand side of the field. And he just took off on the right hand side of the field. He outran everyone for a touchdown. That's the signature and, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and, that, and that's when Fitzmagic was born. Yeah, yeah, and so I think that him being the position as, that he's in. Building off of what they're going to do is good because they don't have to put all the pressure on Tua to come in this season and perform. I think this is a three-year build, okay? I think that this, if this, three, this is year one was, of course, last year. This is year two, I think, to get Tua up to speed, um, but not put the pressure on him to come in and play. I say maybe that he plays around week 11, week 12 at the most. I don't see him playing on the first half of the season unless shit goes really bad. Okay, um, I think Fitzpatrick can instill that Miami 500 football. Uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying that that, that 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 Miami tradition of 500 football, which which you never know, they can go nine and seven and accidentally make the playoffs. Who knows in this damn AFC? This shit just is, is wild. But at the end of the day, um, it comes down to who is going it's going to come down to building the future right the defense is okay they're not great but they're not bad either they make plays they know how to cover bill belichick's and josh mcdaniel's offense which is probably about as good as you're going to get at this point right there's not too many coaches outside of matt vrabel and uh the coach of the lions i always forget his name um matt patricia patricia yeah matt patricia all, all uh, I mean, Mike Vrabel, Matt Patricia. Those are really the only two that can cover a Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels offense. So we are where we are, but let's go over the draft picks that we have from them from la- from this year. That we they got some good studs. They had not, uh, ten draft picks this year. So let's pull right. it up. Um, we have Tua Tagovailoa. We have Austin Jackson, Raekwon Davis, Malcolm Perry, Noah uh, uh, Abinahini. Abinahini? Abin, no. Ab- Abinahin? Abinahin. Ab- Abinahini. Abinahini. Uh, Robert Hunt, Drace- Jason Strobridge. Uh, I covered his name, so I can't see what it says under Kenley. Uh, Brandon Jones. Uh, and uh, your boy, whoever that is from All Boise. Right. So you mentioned Tua, Austin Jackson, Noah, Hunt, Raquan Davis, Brandon Jones, Solomon Kinley, Jason Strobridge, Curtis Weaver, Blake Ferguson, and Malcolm Perry. Yeah, Weaver, I think that's who that is. Weaver, that because his name's not on this little list. So it's fine. But that's good, though, because listen, they drafted an t- offensive tackle and a quarterback in the first round. 
Then they drafted an edge rusher, uh, uh, I mean, a defensive tackle and a running back um, eventually uh, as we go around Robert. Then they drafted another tackle. They drafted a ton of protection. Um, I think if you if you look at it, this was one, two. They drafted four offensive linemen in the first yeah. round. You know what I'm saying? You look at that. That's impressive. Then they drafted a running back. Um, no, no, in the first round, they drafted quarterback, offensive tackle, and I mean, corner. I mean, not in the first round. I meant the draft as a whole. So, my bad. They drafted four offensive linemen in the draft, which is which, which it's crazy when you think about it because you have a quarterback, and then you draft a uh, – you draft a um, a whole a whole lineman set. You know what I'm saying? Like you saying, we're all in on this quarterback business, which is good because we know Tua has a shaky industry, injury history, right? Um, sometimes he doesn't know no better. So when you get a quarterback that don't know no better, sometimes you gotta protect them. But so can I bring up the? So can I bring up the free agent signings real quick? Oh yeah, go ahead. All right. So this offseason, they signed. Jordan Howard, Byron Jones, Kyle Van Noy, Ted Karras, Eric Flowers, Landon Roberts, Clayton Fehlen, Emmanuel Oba, Shaq Lawson, Amu Gruger Hill, and Kayvon Frazier. Now, three of those players are from the New England Patriots, the Van Noy, Karras, and Landon Roberts. Yeah, yeah, yes, they are. Um... And now we talk about Matt Breida. Matt Breida is a former 49er, very familiar with him. Um, that's going to be interesting because he knows how to run. He was just the odd man out in San Francisco when Raheem Mostert just went ape shit. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in the playoffs. Uh, this is going to be interesting. This is – this dog. It's good you were Van Noy and he landed Robert. So they played for him for a few years in New England. Which was interesting because Van Noy was talking. Well, didn't Van Noy retire or was talking retirement? No, Van Noy is nowhere near retirement. No, but he the, the word was he talked, he was talking about right to retirement. Because he no, was that, worried, cat, that, cat just, that cat signed a four-year deal with Miami. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I remember I could have swore. Let me let me take a bite of this. I'm hungry. I'm sorry. I could have swore. That Van Noy, at some point last year after the season was over, was the word was because he's young. He's not even in his late twenties yet, right? I think he, we're talking about a young guy. I, I think he's twenty nine. He was, there was a discussion about him retiring. He's the one that brought it up, not us. And he was like, "I don't know." I was like, "Maybe." I think his heart was gone from it. I have to look up the article somewhere. But then all of a sudden, when he became a free agent, boom. Contrast. Probably annoyed a different tracker. Um, he was wasted in Detroit. Yeah. He he was a number one. He was a first round draft pick. He was Detroit did not know how to use. He yep. went over the Bill Belichick system, became an absolute monster with Matt Patricia and Brian Flores as his coaches for the last four years. And now he went and got paid. I do not blame him for going to the pay. No, nah, at some point you got to because you know New England is only going to pay you what they what Bill Belichick wants to pay you, not necessarily what you're worth. Because what those two those two things are two different things. Um, I mean, Bill Belichick believes in shutting down corners. That's why he was willing to give Darrell Revis the contract that he did. You know, at he gave Gilmore the contract. He gave Gilmore the contract that they gave. Him. Yep, and now they gave him the contract. Um, he believes in three things. He believes if he's in offense, he believes in the in the in the uh the blind side tackle. Um with a blind side guard or tackle, whatever. The the guy that's on the outer left. Left he, tackle. Yeah, left tackle. He believes yeah, the blind side, the blind side tackle if you're if you're a right-handed quarterback. He believes in uh rushers, which is why Vince Wilfork always got paid very well. And he believes in um uh, corners, shut down corners. Those are the three things he absolutely believes in, and those are always going to be the three things that he pays the highest. If you go over the years and look at the consistency of who he's paid, that's who he's paid. And that's, um, that's, 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 that's called space pay. He never paid Tom Brady. No, he never did. And, and 
that is what it is, and that's a discussion. And, and you know what it is? You know what it is? This is how it goes. He, he, Tom Brady had all the choice in the world of whether he wanted to get paid or not, okay? He could have left. He chose not to because I think they made him feel about winning. You know, you probably hear the rumblings that you have a good in New England that you probably shouldn't leave. And he has money. He has a TV 12 Academy, all the endorsements, everything else. He makes more money off of endorsements and his TB12 Academy than probably does with the NFL uh, contract. But at some point, he probably thought to himself, you know what? I hear all these rumblings. I need to find out for myself when I, who I am. Subsequently, that's where he, went. he, he left. He had to prove himself. Yeah, um, we're going to find out this year if it was – I mean, it could be a wash. It could be equal parts both. If it was a system quarterback, like many people call Tom Brady a system quarterback. Yeah. Um, or was it Tom Brady's greatness or Bill Belichick's coaching? That's so, what we're going to see. So, you know, you know what the messed up part about it is, is that the reason why that is all being said is because of one crazy-ass season where Matt Castle went 11-5 and five, with New England and New England still didn't make the playoffs. Okay, that's this yeah. is literally the only reason because had it not been well, for that also, season, also Jimmy Garoppolo was two and zero, and before well, anybody knew what the hell he was, before well, before anybody knew he was, and Picard Bissett was one and one. Yeah, before anybody yeah. knew what he was. So <laughs> okay, and, and so but we got to look at these things, but people want to see that. That's perception, right? The reality is, is that why didn't. If New England would have made the playoffs had they went 12 and 4. Remember the five yeah. teams that they lost to? Had they beat yeah, they the lost, Dolphins? They lost to the Dolphins, who we're talking about right now. Yeah. Had they beat the Dolphins, they would have been in the playoffs. Simple as that. So let's, like, go ahead and take a, let's go ahead and take a look at this Dolphins schedule, sir. Yeah, which is a very interesting schedule indeed. So this is what we're looking at. Okay. They open the season at New England. Yep. Um, then we have the Bills game uh, at home, the Jacksonville game on the road, which is technically a, still a home game because it's in uh, Florida. Uh, we have the Seahawks at home, the Niners on the road, the Broncos on the road, the uh, the Chargers at home, and the Rams at home, the Cardinals on the road, the Jets on home, got the bye week, then the Jets on the road. The Bengals at home, the Chiefs at home, and the Patriots at home. That three game home stand right there is crazy. And then at, at Las Vegas at the Raiders, and then at Buffalo. Ooh. Ooh. So I'm looking at this as they're gonna split with New England, they'll split with the Jets. I think they lose both games to the to the Bills. I think they go two and four in the division. And they go two and four. So I wanna say. Year two of Fitz Magic. Um, see everything. See everything to me is relying on Cam Newton in New England. That's where my problem is. Um, I don't see them beating the Patriots. Uh, twice, especially yeah, if that, the quarterback. I see that week one game. I think that's a New England win right there. For yeah, week one. The late what? season, the late season at Miami, that's the one that Miami's going to win. Yeah. I see them losing one of these back to – technically you got to call it a back-to-back because -back it's the, the Jets game by – and then the Jets game again on the road. Um, I think they lose that Jets game. I think they – I think they can pull off two out of three at home, sadly, against New England because we know New England has been having those problems. Late season in Miami, they get too close for comfort. Two years in a row, they, they played down in Miami. And two years in a row, late in the season, some fucked up shit happens. Um, two years ago, it was the what was it? The, the punt, the fucked up punt and shit, or the uh, or the hail mary? Was it the hail mary or the punt? Oh no, the flea flicker play. Well, that, yeah. that two years ago, and then. Bill Belichick got to shake this man, like. Well, and oh, when, when last year was Fitzpatrick with their five yard run to the end zone, yeah, and they couldn't tackle him. Yep, I. 
that's like the de- that's the devil right there. That's the devil game. The late late season against uh, Miami on the road. I think they can so beat I'm the going, Bills. So Go I'm going eight and eight. You're going eight and eight. I'm going to make them a 500 team this year. All right. So I'll tell you what I'm looking at. They'll lose to New England at home. I mean, I mean on the road. They will lose to Buffalo at home. Uh, They'll lose to Jacksonville at home, lose to the Seahawks at home, lose to the Niners at home. Here's where the fun happens. They'll beat uh, the Broncos, beat the Chargers. I think they'll also pull off the upset against the Rams. Uh, So that's three and five. Beat the Cardinals. No, lose to the Cardinals. Three and six beat the Jets at home. That's four and six. Lose to the Jets at home. I mean, on the road. That's three. Uh, that's four and seven. Beat the Bengals five and seven. Lose to the Chiefs. Uh, that's, that's five and eight. Five and eight. Five and nine. Six and ten. I'm I'm going to give the Patriots the benefit of the doubt and say that the Patriots are going to beat them at home if Cam Newton is playing, and then they'll they'll beat the Raiders. No, they'll lose to the Raiders, but they'll beat the Bills. No, they'll beat the Raiders, lose to the Bills. One of those two. One of those two are going to happen. So I got them. I got them. Loss, loss, win, loss, loss, win, 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 loss. Win, loss, win, loss, loss, win, loss. So eight, yeah, eight and eight. Okay, that sounds fair. That sounds fair. So, given the state of that, that's kind of just like where we're at right now. Like, it's it really is going to be depending on when we get to the first, the uh, the first team because Jared Stidham and the Patriots versus Cam Newton and the Patriots are literally two different Patriots teams. So when we get to the Patriots, I think I might have to give a schedule, like I might have to give a, uh, uh, like two different records for both of them because I don't know which way this is going to go. Be dead honest. All right. So on to the next squad. Which is the New York football Jets. Now, the good news is, is that they found their quarterback. I think um, they have they found their quarterback. Okay, remember this is the same same man that beat the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas in front of a packed house. What you look? Did they cut Joe Flacco? I don't know. Did they cut Joe Flacco? Hold on, he's not on their quarterback. Let's, let's look up oh, Joseph Flacco. Oh, Flacco. Oh, no, he's on the Jets. Okay, he's still on the Jets. Okay, I'm about to say. Oh, you got to cut this motherfucker before the season is Well, yeah, that would have been fast as fuck. Yeah, I wouldn't I would, I would blame him, but, you know. Oh, I found, I found him. He was buried. All right, there we go. All right, so the New York football Jets, they have been tough unless they're playing New England. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last year, they're coming from the infamous IC Post game at New England, where New England just got 14 sacks in the game against. Yeah. Well, all right. So let's 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 start with the Jets real quick, okay? So the Jets are a tale of two teams. All right. There's the Jets that are motivated, who. Oh my God! What I don't, that quarterback? His name leaves my lips every time. I can't remember. Are you talking about Sam, um, Sam Darnold? Darnold, yes, Darnold. I want to say Sam Arnold. Why do I keep wanting to say Arnold? Because it's hey, like, Arnold! <laughs> That's what he looks like with that blonde hair. Arnold, fucking ass. He's not blonde. He's got brown hair. He's got he's got blondish brown hair. He's got that light brown. No, it is dark. Remember the icy ghost comment? It was dark brown hair. Well, he must have died it because when that motherfucker you came out, he had that that blondish brown hair where the motherfucker looked like a diva. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. I think you're thinking of somebody else, bro. No, Trevor Lawrence has the long blonde dark hair. I know that. Sam Darnold has like the, the Ed Sheeran hair. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, Iggy. <laughs> no, Sam Darnold does not have my hair. Watch, let me pull up. That nigga had that Ed Sheeran joint, Ed Sheeran cut last year. Yeah, he, he is a ginger. Now that I look at it. Oh, he, yes, he has that. See, there you go. Well, you know, see, this is weird because you look at the picture. This nigga look like a young version of Andy Dalton now. See, I don't know. That nigga look like angry Andy Dalton. That's what it fucking looks like. That's what we're going to call him, angry Andy Dalton. That, that makes sense? Angry. I'm going to call him angry Andy? Angry Andy. Ah! So, Sam Darnold is the... I see ghost. I see ghost. <laughs> well, he should. I mean, after what happened with him in New England, fuck. Uh, th that's when the defense became the boogeyman. Oh, man, I was like, wow. Um, but, yeah, so... Darnold is their quarterback. He's entrenched at that position. I don't doubt that he's going to be the quarterback of the future. I doubt the Jets' ability to put weapons around him to develop him and make him a great quarterback. That's where my problem is with New England. Um, I mean, not New England, the New York Jets. The bigger piece of this picture is that they got rid of Robbie Anderson. Um, Robbie Anderson, who's their number one receiver, gone. Uh, and probably off the better pastures, actually depending on who and you ask. Why are you talking about getting rid of people that COVID holdouts? Are Josh Dotson, CJ Mosley, and Leo Kalamatangi. Isn't Dotson a receiver? Yes, he is. They're going to be throwing, be throwing footballs to bums and fucking uh, grocery baggers. It's going to be inverted. So, Go ahead. So right now, the, the wide receiver core, is Brandon Berrios, Lawrence Kager, George Campbell, J. Through Cleason, Jarison Crowder, Jamison Crowder, Chris Hogan, Josh Malone, Enzel Mims, Rashard Perryman, Jeff Smith, and Vincent Smith. Chris Hogan is now played for every team in the AFC East. Wow. Yeah. Um sadly enough, that is true. I always thought that Chris Hogan was going to be the guy that replaced uh, Julian Edelman. I thought that that's what his his end game was going to be because when we seen him play, we was like, "This is young Julian with 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 with, with deep with deep ball skill." You know what I'm saying? And he's, a, he, and he's actually yeah. And then all of a sudden, I he said, "I went to Carolina, then I went to the Jets, and then." <laughs> I think it went to Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, uh... I was like, what the, what the fuck you doing, man? Like, come on, bro. Um, but it's fine. It's no big deal. It is what it is. The reality of the situation is this, though. So the Jets are probably the are going to be worse off this season because they lost so many people and their coach is still ass. Do you really trust Adam Gase? Do you really trust Adam Gase? Hell no. Hell no. Adam, when, when your coach comes to the press conference, talk about. And, that's, <laughs> and that is the highlight of your season. You're fucked. Okay. So, um, so let's talk about their signings real quick before we get into the draft. Yeah. They, signed, they signed Josh Andrews, mm -hmm. Pierre Desir, George Font, Connor McGovern, Patrick Onwasor, Richard Perryman. Egg Van Rotten, Frank Gore, and Joe Flacco. Frank Gore has now played for every AFC East team but the New England Patriots. <laughs> True. True. Um, all right. Before we get into the rest of this clusterfuck, let's talk about who they drafted. Hopefully, they drafted people that are actually decent. Let's let's take a look. There. You got the picture up? Yeah, look at that. Look at it halfway. See? Gotta be like this. All right. So, so their, their draft is Ty Beckett, <laughs> Denzel Mims, Ashlyn Davis, Jabari Zuniga, Lamiko Perrine, James Tidamorgan, Cameron Clark, Bryce Hall, and a punter. 
Aiden. Man. Man. Punter man. Punter man. Punter man. Sounds like a fucking Mega Man villain. <laughs> this is Punter man. Uh, it's, uh, it's, so, it's, so Denzel Mims is obviously a good wide receiver. Yeah. Um, Makai Beckton. He's, he's, Kay Beckton. Huh. Yeah, he's decent. I mean, he's a he's an offensive tackle. They drafted him high enough. He's must be good at his job. Um, but he was really highly touted. I, I'm I'm bullshit. Hold on, really. hold on. Look at the camera. I'm looking at you weird right now. You got You got to think. Ty Beckton played on the line on the side of the line that um, Lamar Jackson refused to run on his senior year. Oh well, you know. Uh, well. <laughs> Maybe he had bad body. Maybe he had bad body odor. Okay, maybe maybe that was the reason. I mean, you don't know. We 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 gotta ask Lamar these things. <laughs> you know what I think? What I think they dra- I think they drafted him because Joe Flacco was like, "Yeah, fuck Lamar Jackson." Well, he was supposed to tell the Ravens who to draft, not the Jets. Because that benefits him in no way, shape, or form at all. But it's fun. You get to look around and go, look. I smell, I smell 4 and 12 without even looking at the schedule. <laughs> that's going to be one for the video right there, right? <laughs> Yeah, if you listen to our podcast, you just miss you just miss some magic. Yeah, that would that's gonna be that's gonna be beautiful. Just look at oh my god, really? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you uh, had all the, you had all the draft picks you didn't look like that. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, oh man, we should have thought of that way. That's what we should have done next time. Next time, but of course friend. it comes. Of course it comes at the expense of the New York Jets. Yeah. Uh, I swear, this team doesn't know how to run a fucking franchise. Let's let's get to the schedule. Let's just get to the schedule. Let's... All right. All right. So they start off with Buffalo loss. Then they go to 49ers loss. Then they got the Colts loss. Then they got the Broncos loss. Then they got the Cardinals loss. Then they got the Chargers. Maybe a win. Yeah, Buffalo again loss. Chiefs loss. Patriots loss. Dolphins loss. Dolphins win. Raiders, maybe a win because they seem to beat better teams. Um, Seahawks loss, Rams loss, Brown loss, Patriots loss. I'm looking at three and thirteen for the New York Jets. Oh Jesus Christ! Yes, I I am very down on the Jets this year. I'm down on the Jets every year, and this is where my bias is going to show. Fuck those guys. Um. If they were playing the Cowboys, I could just guarantee a win in that game. Um, I'm bad. I'm so horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> this schedule is not, um, it's not an easy schedule. The easiest game to possibly set uh, the second Dolphins game and the fucking Broncos, and that's not even guaranteed. No, no, not at all, because we don't know what Broncos team is going to show up. Uh, because the Broncos are good defensively, we just don't know what offense is going to pull up to the party. Exactly, like I said, I got I got them at three and thirteen. You know what? I'm inclined to agree with you this one. I was actually thinking two and fourteen because I was thinking maybe the split with the Bills and then maybe the split with the with the Dolphins and that's it. I even think that the Chargers can obviously. I don't, I don't think they beat the Bills. I don't think they beat the Bills at all this year. I think the Bills and the Patriots sweep them. I think the Jets go one in fucking six in the division. One and five in the division. I'm here for it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm here for it. Okay. I, I, let me pull up my screen again. Sorry. I, okay. I know, I know New York, I know New York did this hate him because he's a Patriots fan. No. It ain't that. The team is asshole garbage. That's why what? I don't like them. Well, they said they got rid of people and didn't really add anybody decent. This is going to be a really young team. This team's going to be younger than the Dolphins. They're trending the wrong way. So 
like I said, I see two and fourteen. I I I I can sit here. So you think, are you going two and fourteen? Yeah, I'm going two and fourteen because I think the Chargers can beat them. Dead honest, if you want me to be honest. I, yeah, Tyrod Taylor has that big. Game. Yeah. Plus, he knows how to play against Adam Gates. So there's that. You know. My God. So moving on, we are going to move on to the Buffalo Bills, the toughest defense in the AFC last year. Um. The team that gave New England a could not finish the Patriots off when it counted in their games. Yeah. The Patriots beat them twice last season. Yeah, after having to come back to beat the Bills. They, yeah. The Patriots had to come back and beat the Bills both times, um, which shows that the Bills know how to play the New England for three quarters, and that's about it. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of sad that over the last 20 years, Tom Brady has a better record in Buffalo than all their starting quarterbacks combined. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, it's kind of sad, actually. It's kind of sad. Um, all, all jokes aside, uh, this Buffalo Bills team, outside of playing against New England, is a really, really, really good football team. We they, played, added Stephon, they added Stephon Diggs this offseason. Yes. A big body target for uh, Josh Allen to hit. I mean, if you, if you don't get it to uh, Stephon Diggs, then you're probably just a shitty quarterback. Um, which is why I always say that Kirk Cousins isn't worth his money. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, this is a growing – this is a new – new life has been built in Buffalo. They've steadily climbed the, the ladder, slowly but surely. Six and ten seasons, seven and nine seasons, eight and eight seasons, nine and seven seasons. We even had a Kyle Lorton season in one of those seasons. Um Tyrod Taylor got them to the playoffs. It's it's been tumultuous, but Josh Allen seems to be the truth. He's kind of the best of both worlds. He gives so, zero. Fuck you, you know, you know what we call him. We call Josh Allen Michael Vick. Yeah, Michael Vick. Right. <laughs> White Mike, baby. White Mike. Um, White Mike. Josh Allen. Um, he, he's. He's really fast, deceptively fast. He's not afraid to run the ball. He's not afraid to get hit. He's a big dude that went to Wyoming that gives zero fucks about anything, anyone, and everywhere. Uh, he just wants to win football games. And that's and, he has a, and he has a cannon for an arm. Yeah. We haven't seen anything like that in Buffalo since Doug Flutie because we know that Doug Flutie, for his short ass, used to love to run the ball and used to love to sling that shit downfield. The good thing is that Ralph Wilson – God rest his soul, no longer owns the team because he passed away, and he can't have any say in having Doug Flutie out there. Um, so Josh Allen is has free reign to do what he wants as long as he progresses. Having Stephon Diggs, a big-body receiver, is probably the biggest way to progress, uh, get his progressions up. Uh, and, they, and, they also, and they also traded for Corey Coleman. Yeah, yep. And in this case, you got to think now is that now you have a receiver that is going to demand the double coverage um, that's not going to be on, on a Gilmore Island by himself. There's going to be double coverage on there, which opens up the field uh, for Josh Allen to do Josh Allen things. That was the problem last year. They didn't have a true number one uh, to, to do things like that. So Stephon Gilmore would just shut down one side of the field, and then you had to work with the rest of it. Now you're going to have to bring another corner to fuck with Stephon Diggs, and that's going to be fun. Not fun for me. Um, it's going to be fun for Buffalo because they're going to be able to do everything. Um, so the COVID holdouts for the Buffalo Bills by EJ Gaines, which is a which is a hurt it. because he was one of the best defenders last mm -hmm. year. And star Lutelay. Oh, he was uh, an offensive lineman, right? Offensive of tackle, yeah. Yep, yep. Lutelay. That's going to be a rough one because – He's at Star Little Lady was one of the ones that really opened up things for Josh Allen, but I think they got a replacement for him. If I'm not sure in free agency, we'll check that out in a minute. But let's go first things first. Let's check out the draft picks um, that are on here. So four of their one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four of their eleven draft picks were traded to the Minnesota Vikings for some players. Yeah. So, so that, in the in the draft, they picked up AJ Espenza, Zach Moss. Gabriel Davis, for the third year in a row, they drafted another quarterback, Big Fromm, Tyler Bass, Isaiah Hodgins, and Dane Jackson. 
the surprising part is that Jake Fromm went so freaking low, man. I didn't see that coming. But you know what else? You know what else we can't see with Jake Fromm? What? Just like the NFL, we can't see his face because our logo is in his face. <laughs> Yeah, I did not. I did not expect Jake Fromm to go round five. I thought at least round three, no more than round four, but round five, late round five at that. Oh, well, no, mid round five, but still, they got Zach Moss because they needed a running back. They got AJ Epinesa, which they needed. Lord, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking down on their draft right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, 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 you know what though it's not a bad draft uh, uh, over yeah, right. Gabriel over. Davis out of UCF is a good wide receiver yeah, AJ yeah. is a decent defender considering that D Gabriel Davis played with three different quarterbacks uh, last year in UCF and still put up incredible numbers yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. Zach Moss, he put up big numbers in Utah. I was surprised he went round three. I thought that was easily going to be a, a consensus round two pick because, you know, they don't give a shit about running backs in the NFL they, as far as the draft goes. Um, but, f yeah, Fromm is a shocker. They got a kicker. Hodges is going to be that short dude that they're going to have to probably build up. And Dane Jackson is going to be an interesting pick out of pick to see if he makes the roster or not. That's going to be an interesting one, so... Um, so now free agents, who did they add on this year? Let's see, we got um, the free agent list, yeah, not a whole nothing is in the thing. Um, Reggie Gilliam, Nate Becker, Markel Hill, Victor Salako, Brandon Walton, and Delshawn Phillips. That's and Josh Thomas. That's it, yeah. Yeah. So let's get to let's get to the schedule because I think we can sit here and praise all we want to Buffalo and the things that they've done. They're being coached well. They're defensively stout. They have what the number three defense in the NFL. Remember, it was hilarious that the top five defenses in the NFL actually made it to the second round of the playoffs. They actually they, they did it. And so let's 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 talk about the schedule real quick though. Because, man. All right, so this schedule here is a little weird. It um, So the AFC East is tasked with the toughest schedules in the NFL this year. So we got, we got the Jets, Dolphins, Rams, Raiders, Titans, Chiefs, Jets, Patriots, Seahawks, Cardinals, Chargers, Niners, Steelers, Broncos, Patriots, and Dolphins. Um, I think they start off with wins in their first four games. I think they win those first four. Then they drop that one to Tennessee. A Tennessee game is going to be tough for Buffalo. The they got, they got, go ahead. No, go ahead. What are you saying? No, I, said, I was going to say, I feel like the Raiders play everyone this year. Seems like they do, don't it? Yeah, because we've done – we've done the – we've done uh this is going to be episode – uh, three, five. no, episode five. five, and I feel like we've talked about them in every single episode. And we haven't even covered their division yet. Yeah, we haven't <laughs> talked about their division. I felt, but I felt like we've talked about at least twice or three times in every show that we've done, and I feel like they play everyone at this point. Like, I, like so, so for the first time in Bu in a long time for the Buffalo Bills, they have one, two, three, four primetime games this year. Oh yeah, Bills Mafia is on point. Um, that's probably the most entertaining thing about Buffalo, especially when it's cold and you ain't got shit to do. Bill's fucking mafia, bitch. Go through a fucking table that's on fire. Okay. <laughs> so, like I said, I say 4-0 to start the season. Drop the game against Tennessee. Drop the game against Kansas City. Beat the Jets. Patriots in this game. So we're yep. looking at so we're looking at six and two so far to start the season. I think they beat Seattle seven and two, beat Arizona eight and two, beat the Chargers nine and two, lose to the Niners nine and three, lose to the Steelers nine and four, beat the Broncos ten and four, lose to the Patriots ten and five, lose to the Dolphins 
10 and 6. Mm. That is where I'm going with Buffalo Bills. Mm. Uh, okay. Let me work my magic here. Let me stir the pot here real quick. I'm just stirring the shit. All right, so here we go. Agree with the Jets one. Uh, one. I think that's easy. Um, Dolphins going to be tough. But I think I told you, I said the Dolphins, they were gonna, they're going to beat the Dolphins the second one. Uh, Rams, I think that they'll lose to the Rams in this one. And, I, and it's an interesting one. And I think they'll lose to the Raiders. So two and two. But they won't be by much. Then there, here comes the bounce back. They beat Tennessee. I think they upset the Chiefs in Buffalo. Um, they beat the Jets in Week Seven uh, on the road. I think that, so. That's a sweep. Um, I think they're going to shock the world and beat New England, which will probably if 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 Cam Newton's not starting by week uh, by Week Eight, that's going to be the catalyst to bring Cam Newton in. in. You see that in that game at Buffalo, which is why I gave Buffalo that game. Yeah. So I think then week nine, they'll beat Seahawks. They'll shock the Seahawks with that defense in there. I think they could stop and slow down uh, the Cardinals. They'll beat the, they'll beat the uh, Chargers. They'll lose to the 49ers. So what did that have them at? I think that has them at, uh, was it nine and three? Mm -hmm. yeah, so then. They'll beat the uh, they'll beat the Steelers ten and three. Uh, they'll lose to the Broncos because not necessarily saying the Broncos are beat because that Buffalo I mean that Broncos cold is a totally different thing than Buffalo cold, especially a mile high. They'll lose to the Patriots, uh, and they'll beat the Dolphins. So that put them at eleven and five. All right, so we're almost around the same thought pattern here. Yeah. They would take a game. Yeah. It's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a good season for the Bills. Um, like I said, the AFC East schedules are not easy this year. And we are getting ready to talk about you want to put us back up on screen? Is it? Oh no, where the hell is it? No, no, no. Down on the bottom, the one that has both of us. We're there. Yeah. There you go. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. Hollywood Day Black is not a rookie at this. He just acts like it. <laughs> so next up, we are going to talk about the reigning, defending, 13 years in a row, AFC East champions. And the team that has the toughest schedule in the NFL and the highest turnover in the NFL, the new England Patriots. I, I was hoping you would say the, uh, the, the reigning, defending, undisputed champions of the AFC <laughs> Gotta get that Michael Buffer uh, feeling in there, but uh, the Patriots have went from the cream of the crop in the AFCs to this. We and don't know what they, we don't know what they are right now. We don't know. That's that's kind of, that's what makes this season special. Um, they lost so many people. And we and I honestly thought up before the Cam Newton signing, I thought they were gonna take the biggest leap down. I thought they at the most, because of the defense alone, they'd be an eight and eighteen. That would that was their ceiling. But I think that I thought that their defense can win them eight games. I thought they were gonna turn into the Baltimore Ravens of two thousand, uh, you know, and just win games based off their defense. And then, well, hold on. Before we get to camp, before we talk about camp, yeah. let me talk about the whole the COVID holdout list for the New England Patriots. Yeah. They had eight eight players hold, opt out due to COVID. Those players include Matt Lacoste, Marquise Lee, Patrick Chung, Dante Hightower, Brandon Bolden, Marcus Cannon, Danny Vitale. And Najee Token. Oh, oh. It, 
worst part about that is is that five or six of those are starters. Starters! Okay, um, the series who opted out were Matt Lacoste. Marquise, well, Marquise Lee is a new wide receiver by Jacksonville. We don't know where he was at. But yeah, Patrick Tom, High Tower, Marcus Cannon. Those were all the starters that opted out for the New England Patriots yeah. this year. Mar Marquise Lee is a, is a caliber starting receiver. He would have been literally – the best receiver in New England, not named Julian Edelman. That's that. I, I, think about this. You get this guy. You get this stud of a wide receiver. He's six foot four. Runs a four two forty. He's always hurt. Ridiculous. He's always hurt. Well, because in Jacksonville, everybody's always hurt in Jacksonville, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional. But anyways, that's not the point. The point <laughs> is, is that you get this stud wide receiver and you pay him a base contract. Because you're like, you got to prove that you won't die on the field, okay? And then all of a sudden, he's like, I don't want to die on the field. It hops out for COVID-19. <laughs> so, all these week in, this, in New England again. And then, for the first time in NFL history, a team has lost an MVP and gained an MVP. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Thomas... Q Brady, who left for Tampa Bay, decided to leave and freeze. I know his name is not Q, but still, okay. Uh, Tommy Q, baby. Tommy Q football. Tommy football uh, left, went to Tampa Bay. He took his talents to South Florida. Oh my God, I've heard that before. <laughs> and then decided, the New England decided, he said, we looked at this. They probably saw Jared Stidham. Probably throw probably on virtual cam, throwing footballs to somewhere, and those things were getting intercepted by something because they well, weren't. Well, you, you say that right now, and the funniest thing about it is, in the first three training camps, Terrence Stidham has seven interceptions. That's right. That's right. Oh, poor dude. He learned nothing from Tom, uh, did he? Uh, <laughs> you had one job, Jared. You had one job, and it wasn't. Oh, Jared, and, and, and it wasn't to eat Subway sandwiches, Jared. It was to eat. It was to score touchdowns, and you failed at that. So, Bill Belichick was probably sitting there with Josh McDaniels. He's like, you know, let me let me get that Bill Belichick voice. Um, so, Josh, I, I seen the tape, and uh, we're fucked. So, we're gonna have to go. I have to go get. You know, get the thing is, I just think about this thing. Look at Josh McDaniels going. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Um, <laughs> I got my. <laughs> Hell yeah. Here you go. Hey, Josh. Josh, we're fucked. Josh, we're fucked. Um, so we're going to go to free agent and pick up a quarterback. Uh, there's this guy named Cam Newton. I'm not sure if you ever heard of him, but we're going to bring him in for a workout and see what happens. And but, 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 we're not going to do it. I'm not going to do it until after free agency is closed. Yes. And, the, and we don't even know if we have a season yet. But we're going to do it when no other team wants it. Yes. Well, that way we can offer the lowest, best deal possible, $500,000. That's all I'm going to give him. Okay? If he makes it and he's good for us, then uh, we'll just get the compensatory draft pick when he signs somewhere else next year. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. Get out of my office, Josh. And that's how it happened. That's how it happened. See? <laughs> I was so, there. Okay. Yes, was there. If, if everybody who watches the NFL is living under a rock, Cam Newton is the is in New England, along with this list of free agents that have signed. Before before we start talking about Cam Newton, let's talk about these other signings they did. They signed O. Allen, Adrian Phillips. Demir Bird, Cody Davis, Brandon Copeland, Brian Hoyer, Will Hastings, Brian Lewerke, Isaiah Zuber, Darius Kligo, Tyler Gother, Lamar Miller, Ben Braden, Paul Butler, and Alex Ellis. Alex Ellis was on the Eagles last year, and Butler was a tight end for the Raiders. So they got two veteran tight ends to match with their two rookie tight ends. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So that's a lot of free agent signings. I think it's like the, like maybe the fourth most um, in this. They, office. they they signed they signed twice as many people. They signed almost three times as many people that went on COVID. Yeah, 
<laughs> so I mean, that's that's a lot of people. Well, besides Cam, the big, the interesting besides Cam on here are the Cligo and Lamar Miller. Of course, if if Lamar Miller is healthy, he's one of the top running backs in the NFL. Yeah, and that's the key, though. But they already got – see, the key the, – the good part about this is they don't even need to start Lamar Miller. They got two really good running backs. Yeah, Sony running. and James – they got Sony and James White. They, they, oh, and don't forget about, don't forget about Rex Burkett. Yeah, they, they're, they're straight on the running back. If, if Lamar wants to make the team, he'll make the team. And if he doesn't, we're not – they're not worried about it. That's the Patriot way. Either you want in or you fucking don't. That's simply it. That should be the name – that, that, that instead of the Patriot way, that should be the slogan for the team. Either you want it or you fucking don't. If you don't fucking don't, we don't need you. You're straight. Oh, oh also, I just seen this. Um, the Patriots traded a conditional 2022 seventh round selection to the Lions in exchange for cornerback Mike Jackson Sr. They trade conditional seventh round draft. What the fuck is a conditional seventh round draft pick in 2022? Somebody needs to tell me what. Oh my fucking god! You no, know, you know what that draft pick is? What? We let you guys have Jamie Collins, and I was trying to even re-sign him. So yes, here's a bullshit draft pick for this player. That's what that was. <laughs> a conditional seventh round draft pick. That's like in 2022. It's they're like, I, they're like, you'll get this pick if we have a seventh round draft pick. It's all right. If not, you just have to wait till 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026. So is Bill Belichick, without question, the greatest coach of all time and one of the greatest GMs of all time? He's on some of the shit that he does. Dude, he's on Lombardi levels of greatness when it comes to the, the balancing the coach and the GM side. This dude's like <laughs> this dude's like when we talk about great coaches and GMs, it goes Belichick, then Pat Riley, and then possibly the dude from the Detroit Red Wings who coached the uh and GM the fucking the greatest Red Wing squad of all time. Uh but like you know what I'm saying? Like that's <sighs> how it's way conditional seventh round draft pick. And you get a starting caliber corner oh, my in 2022. In 2022. That's not me. In 2022. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he just approaches shit like, like this. He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all we got. Um, the yeah, seven round draft pick. The seven round draft pick in 2022, bro. Twenty. That's all we got. Um, we know you want to get rid of him, and we got a space for him. Maybe he can make the team, but all we got is this conditional seventh round draft pick, and. Take it or leave it. That's what it is. Okay, okay, Bill. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, um, yeah, okay. We'll we'll send over the contract and everything. That's my quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> that's my quarterback. Yeah, all right. Let's talk about the Patriots draft this year. All right, let's pull it up. Let me see where are we at. Oh, bing. All right, so we got Kyle Duger. That is a Bill Belichick name player right there. We have Josh Uche, Anthony Jennings, Devin Asai, Asai Sai. Asi, no, Asi, Asi. It's Asi. Asi, Asi. Dalton Keen, Justin Vorfrasser, Michael Oniwu, Justin Huron, Cash Malua, and Dustin Woodard. So I like to start this by saying that the Patriots didn't have a second or a third round draft pick when the day started in the draft. Somehow, they ended up with two seconds and three thirds. Because um. they lost their second, because of the bullshit, some bullshit, whatever, they lost yeah. their first round draft pick. No, they lost their second and third round draft pick. Somehow, they traded their first and got into the second twice and the third three times. I don't know how the fuck they did it. You know, I don't want to know. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to. Bill, let me tell you something. I, I love you, Bill. I love you, Bill. Just don't give away your secrets, okay? Like, right. put, your, put your hood back on. Put your hood back on. <laughs> Here we go. He goes like, here's, Bill Belichick, here's Bill Belichick in the draft room. Um, um, we don't have a second or third round draft pick, but um, 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 I'm going to trade this first rounder. Give me all your draft picks. 
<laughs> Boredom. Um, so we're gonna give you a conditional ninth round draft pick in the twenty thirty six drafts. Um, for all three of your thirds. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll give we'll give you a first round draft pick in twenty forty six, and uh, and a. Uh, and we're we're, we're going to split this draft pick in, the, in between three teams, okay? So you're going to give us – you, the Falcons, and the Saints are going to give us all your draft picks for this one conditional first-rounder in 2046, and that's that's all we got. We, we ain't got nothing else. Take it or leave it. <laughs> so so here's, here's, what, here's what this is. So the notes for their draft – so, okay, here you go. From the Chargers, from Baltimore, from Las Vegas – from Seattle via the Jets, from Las Vegas again, from Detroit via Indianapolis, Indianapolis, from Denver, from Houston, from Atlanta. Oh, fuck. That's that's how they pulled off this draft. That's <laughs> this was the greatest robbery since fucking Doc Holliday and Wild Bill Hickok fucking robbed the fucking train. I, I don't hey, even... hey, 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 hold on. Well, they want to take one of my draft picks, so um, yeah, I'm gonna take everybody else's. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> this conditional draft pick in 2059. Um, plus, I'll, I'll I'll let you drive my boat. You'll be able to ride the boat. Okay, six rings. Want to ride the boat? Six rings. Six rings. Drive the boat. We'll drive the boat. You drive the boat. Six rings. No, seven rings now. Seven rings now. Sorry, seven rings. You can drive the boat. Um, you can also drive the Rolls Royce. I don't I don't really drive because I'm busy coaching and winning. So all, all I do is watch see, I don't even drive the boat. Um, I have somebody who does that for me, so yeah, it won't yeah. matter if you drive it or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had to scrub it out because Robert Kraft had the masseuse in there. It's, this is just not good overall. It's just no big deal. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and look at the toughest schedule in the NFL this year. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. And look at and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Patriots fan. It actually is the toughest schedule in the NFL. Oh, le- legitimately, without question. <laughs> The toughest schedule. I'll think we, got the the, Dol- we got the Dolphins, the Seahawks, the Raiders, the Chiefs, Broncos, 49ers, Bills, Jets, Ravens, Texans, Cardinals, Chargers, Rams, Dolphins, Bills, Jets. This season, if they have a winning record, will be Bill Belichick's greatest coaching triumph of all time. Oh, yeah, easily, without question. This is... Um, this is a hell of a schedule. When you look at this, so the only losing teams on the schedule are the Chargers, the Jets, and the Dolphins, and the and the Broncos. Because remember, the Raiders went what eight and eight. The fucking Cardinals went seven and nine. So I take it. See, I don't really call seven and nine a losing schedule, especially if you were only slated to win like two games. Yeah, the card the Cardinals <laughs> over team last year. Yeah. So they they over, definitely overachieve. So the you know the Cardinals are on their way up, and the Bills um, are on are up. The only problem with the Rams is that they can't afford anybody that's playing for them right now. Uh, <laughs> this is, I mean, this is rough. What 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 are you looking at? I I I have a thought in my head, but like I said, I have two numbers in my head. So um, okay, so. I believe with what I've seen, and I've been following their practice this offseason since practice has started. Yeah. Cam Newton is knocking the rust off every game. He's had some very good practices. The first couple were rough, but he's starting to turn it around. Um, you know, I'm going to give my homer answer here, and I'm going to go 11 and 5 with the Patriots this year. Oh, uh, all right. That, that's, a, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Hold on. In uh, Belichick, I trust. In Belichick, you trust. Okay. All right. I can feel that. Okay. So I have two separate numbers in my head. Okay. okay. So first and foremost, if Jared Stidham starts this entire season, 
And then somehow we get to the the the, the Buffalo Bills game, or the Jets, the, yeah, the Bills game, and uh, in in week seven, and he's still, uh, it, it, well, that would be oh, it'd be week eight. I'm sorry. So we get to the week eight game against Buffalo, which I'm pretty sure Buffalo would then win, and then all of a sudden it's Cam Newton. They're going to be working from behind, and then the team is going to go eight and eight. If well, I, I do got to play devil's advocate here, but I was not really devil's advocate. Patriots advocate is the fact that if Stidham struggles in that first game, if he does start that first game against Miami, don't forget, Brian Hoyer knows his offense very well, and he is a backup. True. But I think the confidence builder, I think they can beat uh, – I think they could possibly beat the Dolphins in the game one. I, I don't doubt that. OK, um, the Seahawks game is going to be rough. And that's going to be rough for their defense too, having to deal with Russell Wilson. The Raiders game, I think they could beat the Raiders. I think they'll lose to the Chiefs. It's the back to back to back games with the Broncos, the Niners and the Bills. That's what's going to cost Jared Stidham his job. Um, the Broncos defense is still one of the toughest defenses in the NFL. We already know how the 49ers defense is. But then they're coming back home. And if they get fucked up at home against Buffalo, which is a very, very real possibility. Hey, I, I, think you, I think you're reading it wrong. The gray is away. Oh, the gray is away. Is it away? Yes. Look at the bottom. Oh, gray is away. Gray is away. Okay. Let's try this again. So they'll still, still beat the Dolphins. They still have to go to Seattle and beat the Seahawks. That's not going to happen. Home against the Raiders, they'll beat the Raiders. Chiefs, not going to happen. Two and two. But Broncos, Niners, and then Buffalo away. No, not going to happen. This is probably what's going to cost Jared Stidham his job if Jared Stidham is playing. And then they're going to turn the reins over. I would believe that Cam Newton would be ready to go by week 10. Right, uh, uh, right there, okay? However, if Cam Newton starts game one of the NFL season, the Patriots will return to their former glory because it's then very simple. Beat the Dolphins. Beat the Seahawks. Beat the Raiders. And they finally get over the Chiefs hump. Four games. Then they beat the Broncos. Lose to the Niners because that's a tough-ass fucking game. It'll probably be probably one of the closest games that they've had to deal with. And it's going to suck because it's at home. But then they're going to come in and stop Buffalo, stop the Jets, get over the hump of, uh, of Baltimore, Beat Houston at Houston, beat the Cardinals, beat the Chargers, beat the Rams. Um, oh, they got an L.A. trip. And then they have to come back to the West Coast. I think they'll lose the second game in Miami. Uh, they'll lose the second game in Buffalo for beat the Jets. That would make them 13-3. and three. So which one are you backing on? I'm banking on uh, Belichick going the safe route and doing the Jets game. Like, I mean, I mean and going with Stidham first. And then see if he fucks up because that well, that Stidham hurt his Stidham was in the hospital for a leg injury yesterday. See, that's tough. If Cam, see, my thing is Cam goes day one, they're thir they're th thirteen and three team. If Stidham goes and he, they they say we're gonna ride with Stidham until he fucks up, which is gonna be week six, week seven, well, well week five, week seven, and week eight. That's an eight and eight season because I think they can come back and. Or even maybe I, nine and seven. I need, I need one hard number for you, sir. Why? Why do you need a hard number for me? Because that's how this works. Does it, Go sir? Huh? Does it, sir? Is this how it works? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Fine. I'll give you. Let me play devil's advocate. If they give up on Jared Stidham early enough. And Hoyer dies uh, because of the KC game. His arm just falls off his body because um, he's having to play from behind. I'll give you ten and six, but that means right, so, Buffalo's going to win the division. All right, so I, I was going to say that you got Buffalo win the division. I got the Patriots win the division, and we actually have the same record as the opposite side for both of those teams. Yeah, yeah, I believe in Buffalo. I believe. I don't think. Unless something drastic happens, Buffalo's going to continue on the same. Hold on. Pull up, pull up our cameras real quick. 
I'm getting there. Hold on. Yes, sir. Anybody, anybody who has followed the overtime sports show when we talked about the New England Patriots and Cam Newton, you looked at me crazy when I was talking about Buffalo was going to win this division. I did. Okay, I thought about this, but the but the very real situation is that. They will go with Stidham on the because he knows the playbook. Regardless, Stidham of, is not going to start. Stidham is not going to start. I'm telling if, you that. Which is, which is why I said, if Stidham starts, they're an eight and eight team. Okay, if Cam Newton starts day one, they're a thirteen and three team, hands down. Because Cam Newton is going to go balls to the wall. I and you and we talked about this a few weeks ago, and I said if Cam Newton goes day one, the Patriots are back to former glory. There is no question about it. I don't doubt that. A matter of fact, I would even go on to say that if Cam Newton starts day one, day one, and he's healthy, day one, the Patriots will be back in the Super Bowl. They will fix their Baltimore issue. They will fix their uh they'll fix their fucking Kansas City Chief issue, their Houston Tech issue, and most importantly, their fucking Miami Dolphins issue, because that's the issue. That I, I don't see how you say they have a Chiefs issue when Pat when Patrick Mahomes only beaten them once in his career. Well, that's all it took because that's when when after Patrick Mahomes beat them, everything went fucking downhill. All the doubts start being juggled around and shit. So he's got the Buffalo Bills winning the AFC East and toppling the New England Patriots. I got the New England Patriots going 14 years in a row of winning this division. With an asterisk. An asterisk. But anyway, we're going to cut this one off right here. And um, this has been the AFC East Rundown of the NFL Preview. My name is Jason. That man over there. That is Hollywood. Jay Black. And we are out of this bitch. This is. All right.